Listen, today is a sad day, girl. It is raining, and my heart is raining as well, but not really, because I have enough tissues to block myself up, up out of this pain, and as well as my heart. What is up guys, it's Nitro with another video and I hope my lighting is okay because it's actually raining. But anyway, everybody, thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing previews. You know what I'm saying. But I have got to DNF a book. I'm DNFing Mr. Church's Secretary by uh, Suzette McNeil. This book has got to go. Like, you know, let me actually pull my bookmark. I'm stopping at page 230. Me and Taylor Latner or whatever that boy's name was in that movie. What was his name? Uh, I don't know his name in the movie yet. So anyway, I need to talk to you guys about why I want to DNF this book. Okay, so first let's go ahead and get the plot out of the way. For one thing, it's a, it's a period piece, as I said in my TBR. It takes place in London during 1940s, particularly and most specifically during the emerging of World War II that coming across England. Um, with that being said, Winston Churchill's, Churchill's is in office, and you know, you know, you know how that stuff goes. But anyway, let's get to the point of the fact that the book is about a 20-year-old something, 20-something-year-old woman named Maggie Hope. Maggie graduated top of her class in Boston, you know, in America in Boston, but even even though Maggie is technically American, her roots have always been in England, always been English. Um, what happened was that her parents died very early on in her when she was born. They died in a car accident. You know, her mother's death is very much confirmed. As for her father's death, it is still in question. And really, that was a subplot to this to this book. So, with Maggie wanting to pursue her education even further at MIT, her aunt suggests that she go back to London and settle her grandmother's estate. Uh, that's her father's mother. And with that estate comes a nice glorious house inside of the, you know, in London. You know. But Maggie decides that she doesn't exactly want to leave from her roots. You know, once she's inside of her grandmother's home, she finds it cozy or whatnot. And that leads her to sort of settle it as a boarding house. And that is when she starts to gather these other girls to live with. Um, one, is, one girl's name is Paige. Paige is like the beauty girl. One girl's name is... Uh, Charlotte or they call her Chuck she's sort of like the tomboy um, then she has two girl two twins I think they're dancers one is named uh, Annabella and one is named Clarabella and then somewhere in the middle of the book I don't know what happened I don't know how this girl was introduced and the next thing you know she was living with them I don't even remember recall the conversation they had but then there's a ballerina named Sarah that lives with them so that's all five of these girls and let me tell y'all right now I could not stand not now one of them. I wish they will all disappear. But just to move things further, Maggie has been looking for a job working inside of the British Intelligence. You know, she has some uh, colleagues that already work in there, some male colleagues. And so, you know, she tries to infiltrate her way through into working for the British Intelligence through those networks that she's created. However, as it always goes, you know, she's a woman, so the doors are constantly being slammed into her face. However, she manages to get a job inside of the British intelligence as a secretary. As you know, they have many of them, not necessarily private of Winston Churchill at this point, but she gets there for whatever reason. But she manages to get a job as a secretary for the British intelligence after the previous girl or the girl's position that she takes over is killed outside of her home. So, you know, that me, I was like, ooh, it's like, ooh, I see what's going on here. I was like, yeah. So subsequently, Maggie is given this position as a secretary, not necessarily a private secretary of Winston Churchill but as the events continue to turn she does manage to land that job and that's how the book is titled Winston Churchill's secretary you know that's it you know when I first talked about this book on my TBR I was just like you know what I cannot wait to get into Maggie Hope's story I was like I just feel it in my bones and my spirit that she is gonna serve the boys and girls of the world some espionage realness no, but before I tell you why I did not like this book and why I felt like it just it was a big disappointment, I have to go ahead and say that the reason the reasons that I did like the book was that I think the author did a pretty nice job of putting in plugging in those little antecedents about you know um, London during the 1940s as well as you know you know planting in some of the history concerning World War II during the time in England, um, you know. But just for the, the little minuscule things, I really enjoyed was talking about the fashion that the women were wearing at the time as well as the courting system uh there was one in one scene where a girl was describing using lotion made of sugar and i think butter or something like that so those little antecedents of information was definitely interesting okay so that was probably the only thing that kept me reading to be honest with you now as for the bad parts and the reason that i'm dnf in this book at 230 pages because i don't want it to ruin my weekend or my life for that matter 
I didn't I actually don't even know where to start okay we'll start with the characters as I said before Maggie had all these girls living with her each of these girls was sort of tied to another man who was either working for the British intelligence or was in the opposition of the war just some form of contact I did not like any of these characters I thought that this book with the characters and with the dialogue it was just for for the fact that you had two mysteries going on. One was Maggie, uh, the, the previous secretary who was murdered in front of her home, as well as Maggie uncovering the history of her father, you know, whether or not he really died or not. For all that was going on, this book was just a freaking chatterbox. It just talked talk talk that's all it was these people all they did was talk all they did was go to bars and talk all they did was go to the, the to the theater and talk all they did was jump in cafes and talk subways and talk they talked over tea they talked over coffee in the in the dining room in the living room just talk 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 meanwhile there's two running mysteries going on and it's just not being served so really it was just like it was just like I was just reading this book about this gaggle of girls from the 1940s talking about men, talking about nail polish, talking about fashion, talking about uh, theater work, talking about just, I don't know, just all this stuff that, I mean, it, it's cool, but it just, I, it was just losing. It was just losing. It was just losing and losing and losing itself away from the thread that I felt like the author, sh I don't like to say should have, but was probably best to be focusing on that's just all it was it was just like a bunch of chatter and there was a scene where uh one of the men one of the men who according to one of the girls he got on his knees at dinner and he proposed to her and then the whole group the whole gaggle of, of the team or whatever these people are they start busting out until he's a jolly good fellow during the wartime like i was just like oh my god like really for real He's a jolly. I'm pretty sure that that's what they did back then. But at the same time, it's like, girl, you have. Where's the mystery at, girl? That's what I'm trying to say. Like, where, where, where's the mystery at? Like, are we gonna get on point here? Like, I don't care. I don't care about any of these characters and their proposals and stuff. I need you to get me into the root system of British intelligence, espionage, women empowered highly intelligent solving real crimes <laughs> girl it's like really oh as flimsy as this book is that's how the writing was to me it had no girth to it and that's a kind of strange term to use right but yes it didn't have any girth to it okay and what i mean by girth is like nothing was fleshed out to me um none of the scenes were fleshed out none of the characters were fleshed out you know you sort of got like this cursory um scope of what the characters were their backgrounds and then she would immediately chop on to the next scene and when it comes to these scenes like you could have she had like one chapter one or two or three chapters that was filled with constant jumps in the storyline and i mean by jumps is like you'll have a block of scene that focuses on maggie then there's what I even change in chapters, what I even we move to another chapter, then you have a block of scene focused on her aunt all the way in America writing this letter to Maggie, a letter that Maggie never read. You don't you don't have no grasp of the of the time frame in which these letters were written and whether Maggie and I read them and whether or not she got the information from the letter. And then that scene will cut off and then you'll go to a scene involving the actual antagonist, which is a a trio of the book the people who murdered the girl at the beginning of the series so you kind of know who they are but there's like a little undercurrent of mystery behind that as well you know that you see further down the line in the plot then you cut into a scene filled with characters that you don't know have no clue who they are but you know that their role is to go into the office of Winston Churchill's right-hand man to tell him that Maggie is getting closer to finding out who her father is and it's just like okay like what like what and that's just pretty much where I just I left off like I just could not deal anymore with this with this this book it just was so annoying I didn't like any of the characters it was just so filled with chatter uh, her writing just was not it just it was not inspiring you know it's just like she was just writing to, to make her point and then she moved on to the next scene and I just did not enjoy this book at all so that's just where I'm gonna leave Mr. Church's secretary like it, I just I'm completely done with it like 
I think at this point what I'm going to be doing, because I have one more book to read on my TBR, which is Pauper the Pedigree. I'm going to finish the weekend reading this Buffy book, which is number four in her season 10, number four. I bought this back in February, and I, I didn't even get into it for real. I think I'm just like a quarter ways through, and I was like, I, I can... It smells good. I could take the time to finish reading this book instead for the weekend, and then I'll read the last book on my TBR, and I think that'd be a good that'd be a good thing to do. So that's it, guys. I'm completely done. If you've ever had to DNF a book, then please let me know the reason why you had to. I would love to hear you guys' story. And if you have read Mr. Church's Secretary, then please leave your comments below. There's some more I could really get into it, like um, uh, like a character pacifying a, a a rape a rapist as not a monster or whatever. But it it, it as I read further along, it was kind of incorporated as a plot device, you can say. But I'm completely done with this book. This book is actually the first in a series, and it's so disappointing that I am at the point where I just, I'm not interested. I'm just not. It's just boring. Peace. I was about to figure out what I'm going to do with this book. Like, should I go and donate, donate it to a library bookstore or where I got it from or something? And then, you know, I decided that what I'm going to do is just give it away. So if you're watching this video and you are subscribed to that like, that, that thunder, you are watching this video and you are subscribed to my channel and you are living in America, girl, because, you know, I can't, I can't ship overseas right now, then drop me a comment to say that you want this book and I'll just ship it out to you uh, whenever. I know it's kind of weird after this video that I'm gonna give it away, but you know, I always believe that reading books, that sort of thing, it's all relative to in every individual's personal experience, you know, what they've read, what they grew up with, their background, you know, it's, it's your own personal taste. I just know that this is not for me, unfortunately, and it's very sad, but I don't wanna just leave it in a box. I don't wanna just find the time have to find the time to go put it up somewhere to you know be shipped off somewhere or whatever so i'll give it to somebody so just leave me a comment you are subscribed to my channel you do live in the usa sorry guys then i'll ship it out to you as soon as possible peace